halfway through the week. Uh, this morning I sent you guys a few emails, uh, one pertaining to uh, your teacher evaluations that you have to get filled out uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I've also got blue papers, uh, so before you leave today, please grab a copy of these teacher evaluations. The, the link is in the email if you'd rather share the link with your teachers. Um, but these blue forms are also something you can give your teacher as they do their self evaluate or their uh, teacher evaluations for you. Each of you need to have four of these completed uh, to qualify for either the regional or the governor's work ethic certificate. So you need to have four of these completed turned in. Uh, it's a link to a Google form that the teacher will do, and then the results come directly to me, and then I can group you and make sure that your evaluations are in order. So grab one of those and. I didn't make enough copies, I think I do. If I don't have enough copies, um, and you just want to come by and see me in my room at 8531, stop on by, and I'll give you a copy of it there as well. If you have an evaluator, like maybe you have a job, and you want to get an evaluation from your boss, uh, there's a separate sheet that you need to fill out. I have copies of those in my room. I didn't bring those because I didn't think that would be a situation that applied to everybody. So if you would like your boss to fill out one of your evaluations instead of having four teachers, by all means, Come by my room and I will give you that form that you can take to work. All right, so make sure we're checking those emails uh, and getting things completed on time. Another email I sent was about your self evaluation, which you do in our third self evaluations. Again, it's a Google form. Click on it, complete your third evaluation. I'll be able to check to see if you've done two or three. If you had only done one previously, still do this one and then do another one in about a month. I'll send a reminder for that if you haven't got your third evaluation done yet to complete your third evaluation at that time. But we should all be on our third evaluation right now. Uh, for some reason you missed one, uh, we just have to space those out about a month in between. Um, let's see, what's next? Uh, our next meeting will be March 18th. I do want to bring that up. So March 18th, it's the week before spring break. That Wednesday will be our next and our last meeting. Right, our last meeting for the year. Uh, we'll be pulling attendance records starting next week to see where we're at and how many absences you have. Uh, volunteer sheets can start being turned in now. Uh, in fact, if you of you turn in your volunteer sheets to me, you can turn them into the main office, they can put it in my mailbox, uh, you can bring it by my room, drop it off, but we need to get those volunteer hours in. Uh, we got to start putting everything together so we can send off your uh, qualifications to the state to see if you qualify to receive the award, and our bank will be held sometime in May, date to be determined. Uh, class scheduling is going on. Juniors, we have a new exciting opportunity for you with the internship program. Uh, if you need more information, you can stop by see me, talk to your counselor. Um, but the internship program is a chance for you to essentially be in school for half a day, and then you can go a half a day and work at a local business in hopefully a field that you would particularly want to go to college for. Um, so again, we have some exciting opportunities for that. We're trying to really grow and expand the program. So juniors, if you have any other questions, please talk to me or to your guidance counselors about the program uh, when you have a chance. Uh, today's discussion is going to be on dressing for success and punctuality, why it's important to make sure that we're on time, and why it's important to look for the part of the, uh, whatever business that you're going to be going into. Uh, we have a speaker who owns several uh, uh, businesses, several businesses out in Lake County, and we're very excited to have him with us today. So without much further ado, let me introduce Mr. Kirk Cordill to you. Hey, good morning. Happy to be with you today. My name is Kirk Cordell. I'm one of the owners of a couple of car dealerships locally, BMW of Cherville and South Shore Jaguar Land Rover. Cars are my passion, and it's really cool to be able to combine a passion with a profession. I started working in dealerships. I just wanted to be around cars when I was about your age. I was about 16. And I started washing cars, I drove a parts delivery truck, and I really started from the bottom. Went to college, after that started with a large dealer group, went back and did my MBA, and I started with the BMW group after that. I spent about 20 years with BMW, and it kind of took me around the world. It was a whirlwind tour. I spent 11 years living and working overseas, uh, so I spent two tours through Munich, Germany, through BMW headquarters. Had to learn a foreign language. I never took German in high school or college. Uh, I think it's a lot easier to learn a foreign language at your age than, than the age I was at. 
Uh, spent six years in China. I started BMW's financial services companies in mainland China and Hong Kong back in 2008. Really cool opportunity to be able to do a startup in a big company like BMW and to do it in a market like China, which when I went there, BMW was selling about 66,000 cars a year. And when I left, about 325,000 cars a year. And last year, BMW sold 790,000 cars in China last year. So pretty cool. Uh, but then I, I like to say I had a reverse midlife crisis. I punched out of corporate, I got married, and I moved to the suburbs. So I originally grew up in Mishawaka, Indiana, so I'm a native Hoosier. And uh, fortunately, in BMW, I got to a point that I was one of the global vice presidents, but what that also meant was I was probably never going to get back to the Midwest. And at a certain point, you know, I think Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz said it best, there's no place like home. And this opportunity allowed me to uh, stay with BMW in a different way, uh, step out on my own as a business owner, and uh, get back to the Midwest. So it's great to be back, and it's really nice to be, you know, 15 minutes away from friends that I grew up with, and, and uh, it just makes, makes life a little bit sweeter. So, talking today about, let's start with punctuality. So, what about punctuality? Well, number one, what does it show about you? It shows you're dependable, shows you're organized. But I think the most important thing is that it shows you have respect for other people. You know, I came with Will Blaros this morning and I said to Will, how many times have we met where we haven't been on time and there hasn't been a time? I know he has a busy schedule. He knows I have a busy schedule. I appreciate that he takes time out of his schedule to meet with me. And because of that, I'm on time. If you're in a work environment, if you are not on time, that business gets interrupted. If you're in a retail work environment, it means other people, your coworkers, have to cover for you because the job has to get done. And that's out of respect for your coworkers that you show up on time. It is. And if you think you're going to be able to change schedules, work with somebody else, and you don't have enough respect for them to show up on time, it's not going to work very well. So I think the biggest thing about punctuality is respect for others and respect for yourself. Showing that you're dependable, showing that you're organized. There's some other things too. If you're running late for something, it's a little stressful, right? You're driving through traffic, you're running to get somewhere, it creates more stress. If you show up on time or even early, there's a lot less stress on you personally. And I will tell you, having worked in Germany, you know, punctuality is holy in Germany. Like everything runs by the rules and being early is being on time. You know, I will tell you the difference between American business and German business is that in meetings in the U.S., if you get to the room on time, you're okay. In Germany, the meeting starts exactly when the meeting is scheduled. Everybody's supposed to be in their place, have unpacked, got the presentations ready, be ready to go. Uh, so punctuality in different cultures also takes on a different meaning. You know, China was a little bit more about being near the room at the time the meeting was supposed to start. So it does depend on, on the cultures and the settings as well. Uh, for me as a business owner, you know, showing up for an interview, if, if somebody shows up for an interview late, I'm most likely not going to hire them. Because in an interview, you are supposed to be putting your best foot forward. And if you can't show up for the interview on time, I highly doubt that you're going to show up on a regular basis on time. This is when you're supposed to be showing me the best part of yourself and your work ethic. When I go and interview for jobs, and when I did in the past, I was always early. You never know what's going to happen with traffic, with accidents. And it's okay to show up early. But you can find something little else to do. You can stay in your car, you can stay outside of where you're supposed to be. I saw one question here was, is, is there such a thing as being too early for an interview? No, there's not. Uh, but wait until about 10 minutes before the scheduled interview, before you present yourself to either the reception or somebody in charge. You can find something to do in the meantime. Uh, 
Uh, but being on time is extremely important for that first step, which is an interview, and on a daily basis, and that's out of respect for others. Dressing for success. Well, and, and let's go back to punctuality and one other piece. We sell Highline cars, and I've got a spoiler alert. Nobody needs a BMW to get from point A to point B. But wouldn't you really rather drive a BMW to get from point A to point B? A Jaguar Land Rover runs the same. We deal with, I would say, high net worth individuals. And the most precious commodity is time. I think Benjamin Franklin said it best, that time is the equalizer of all men and women. It doesn't matter, we had the State of the Union last night, it doesn't matter whether you're the President of the United States, your student, your teacher, your business owner, we all have 24 hours in a day. You cannot buy more time. So generally people in these, our customers, are probably busy people. And time is very important to them. They will pay extra money for airlines, uh, airline affinity programs, hotels, different things where their time is respected and can save their time. So for us serving these customers, if we make an appointment with them, we need to be on time. Not only that, we need to be early. And it's out of respect for them and their busy schedule. It's helping them with their ownership experience. Again, they don't need a BMW to get from point A to point B. But it's about creating that ownership experience, about creating that service and the value and respecting their time. Dressing for success. It really depends on what environment, what's the occasion, and what image do you want to project. You have to know your audience. Are you going to a party? Are you going to Starbucks? Are you going to work? What is the occasion? And if you don't know what to wear or what's appropriate, do a little bit of research ahead of time and find out what would be appropriate or ask somebody. You know, I will tell you, attire, dress in the workplace has changed dramatically from the time that I started in business till now. You know, when I started, it was always a suit and tie, you know, leather soled shoes, nice leather shoes. It's not that way anymore. And it becomes a little bit more confusing about what's appropriate. I've got a meeting tomorrow night where I had to ask, what is the proper attire? Don't be afraid to ask. You know, I'm meeting with an executive. Is it suit and tie? Is it a jacket appropriate? What is appropriate? So don't be afraid to ask somebody else about what the proper attire is. When you do make that selection, make sure it's neat, it's clean, it's pressed, your shoes are shined, if you're wearing sneakers, make sure the white is clean. It doesn't matter what you're talking about, but it's about having a professional appearance. And again, what image do you want to project? If you see somebody that's nicely dressed and you wonder where they got their clothes, ask them. Find out where they shop. And if that's what you, the image you want to project, do some research on it. But it really comes down to that. I will tell you, as far as confidence, no matter what it is in life, if you are confident in what you are doing, you are going to be more successful. I saw a question, one of the questions was about, can you tell the difference in the performance of a salesperson or an employee based on how they dress? The answer to that is, yes I can. If a salesperson shows up and they look like a million dollars, I know they feel really confident. And I know the likelihood of them selling a car that day is probably dramatically increased. So it may not be in retail, but whatever you're doing, confidence is key. It can be sports, it can be your personal life, it can be your love life, um, in, in your professional life. If you have confidence, you're going to be more successful. And if dressing that way gives you more confidence, you will be more successful. And as far as finding out what's appropriate and what other people are wearing, you know, I had some good mentors along the way that helped me. You know, my dad was an aerospace engineer. I've gone a little bit further professionally than he did. And without mentors along the way, I probably, I know I wouldn't have been as, as successful. And it came down to 
getting some advice on what was appropriate for what occasion, and showing up neatly pressed, clean, uh, shoes shine, everything. I will tell you, there was one of the uh, gentlemen that ran all of BMW globally. When he did an interview, and I thought it was kind of funny, but he looked at your shoes, and he wanted to see if they were shine, and more specifically, he wanted to look at the heel on the shoe, because heels wear unevenly. He wanted to know how much attention to detail you had, and if your heels were worn unevenly, he probably wasn't going to hire you. Now, that's somebody that really pays attention to detail, but that is things, those are things that people look at in interviews. High net worth clients. Again, we are serving high net worth clients. If you look at luxury hotels, how people present themselves, it's a professional attire, it's a professional appearance. It's about building trust. If you look like you know what you're doing, people have more confidence in you from the other side. People will trust you more. If you're in sales, one of the biggest things to making a sale is establishing trust with your potential customer. Looking the part helps put the other person at ease that you might actually know what you're talking about. If you look the part, you need to play the part as well, but looking the part is a start. First impressions are vitally important. People will generally make or gain, gain an impression of you in probably the first two to five minutes of their interaction with you. So that first two minutes is crucial. A lot of it is visual if you're meeting a person. How does that person look? How are they dressed? Do they look the part? Are they friendly? Do I think they know what they're talking about? And if you think about what we're selling, we sell cars anywhere from $5,000 to $200,000. And for most people, buying a car is the second largest purchase they will make in their life. The first being a home. And some of these cars and vehicles are the price of homes. And so people are a little bit nervous when they come in and they spend that kind of money. And they want to know that they're dealing with somebody that knows what they're doing. Can you tell me about the product? Can you represent the product? It's a little bit of a lifestyle. They are buying part of the lifestyle. I don't need a BMW, a Jaguar, or a Land Rover to get from point A to point B, but I want to have one to get from point A to point B. I want the service and convenience that comes with it. That's what they're buying. And how you dress is a big piece of that. As far as the, the questions that have come in, and I'll, excuse me, I'm going to pull these out for a minute. You know, I think one of them was about piercings and tattoos. If you have facial body piercings, take them out for an interview. But again, I, I would say if you're coming to interview with us. But again, it depends on where you're interviewing and what you're interviewing for. It may be acceptable at some places of work. Uh, for us, it's probably not. Tattoos. Cover them up if they're visible. That's it. But it really depends on what job are you interviewing for and what's acceptable in that workplace. And try to match your dress and attire to where you're going to interview or where you're having a meeting or the party or different things. Every workplace is different. It's very different now. Some are very casual where jeans are acceptable. Others are not. Others are more formal. But you need to find out what is acceptable in that environment and kind of dress to that or dress a little bit up from there. Um, being overdressed is never a problem. Being underdressed is a problem. So if you have any questions about it, err to the side of being a little bit overdressed. As far as overdressing, you know, you also want to dress for the job that you eventually want to get. So if you want to become a manager, if you want to become an executive, you know, dress the part. Um, because people will start to believe that you can actually fit in in that piece. You know, I worked for a European company for a very long time. And I would say European styles, listen, the Europeans, Milan, Munich, Paris, they're probably at least a year ahead of fashion on the New York, maybe even two. 
So when I went to work overseas, I really had to take a look at what I was wearing, what other people were wearing, and kind of match it appropriately. And that did help me, but I had to learn a lot. Um, and it depends on, again, it goes back to the environment and what you're trying to accomplish. Other questions that we have here, let me take a look. Assuming that you have hired employees, what do you expect when they walk through the door of your dealership? Uh, good question. Number one, going back to punctuality, expect them to be there on time or that you show up a little bit early. Um, we spend a lot of time together. Uh, it is a retail business. We're open six days a week. And part of it is, are you going to fit the culture as well? Right? We spend a lot of time together at work. Are we going to enjoy working together? We really have a motto of, you know, work hard, have fun. And do I want to see you every day is one thing I will assess in an interview. Right? Do I want to see you every day in my office? Do I want to see you every day in the place of business? And we have, I will tell you, we have a really diverse uh, team and crew at, at our dealerships. If you go into BMW, we have between 10 to 12 salespeople, and it, it runs the gamut. There are four languages spoken on the floor. We have English, Spanish, Arabic, and German. We have male, female, we have young, we have middle-aged, we have older. For me, the biggest thing, again, going back to the second largest purchase you can make in your life, is that somebody coming in is able to find somebody else that they relate to or that they feel comfortable with. And maybe it's just a part of me having been around the world a little bit, like I enjoy the diversity. Um, we have two female salespeople on the floor. We've got, uh, you know, African-American, Hispanic, uh, Arab. It, it, it's, it's kind of the United Nations. And it's a, a little bit of a, a motley crew, if you will, but it's fun. And everybody brings something to the table. As much as you see on TV about the uh, people not being able to get along in the U.S., I will tell you, from what I see on an everyday basis, it's not the truth. We have a good team. It's a very diverse team. It makes it a little tougher to manage at times, but it is a lot of fun. And again, anybody walking through that door should be able to find somebody that they feel comfortable with. And as far as professionalism, it comes to the basics. Greet customers when they walk through the door. I learned this, I worked at the Gap as well as at the dealership, so I slung jeans when I was in high school. One of the first things they taught us was greet a customer within 30 seconds. I still believe that. And make them feel welcome. Welcome to BMW Sherbo, welcome to South Shore, Jaguar Land Rover and help put them at ease. What can I do for you? How can I help you? And that's what I expect of people coming through the door. Does the way you dress in the workplace affect the way you perform your job? I think it does. I think, again, going back to if you feel like a million dollars, you're probably going to be more confident and you're going to be able to perform at a higher level. And it depends on where you're at in the store. You could be on the showroom floor, you could be washing cars, you could be in the parts department, you could be a technician out in the shop. So your attire is probably going to be a little bit different, but if you're neat, you look good, you're presentable, you're probably going to be more comfortable. Do you notice the difference in customer interactions with your salespeople between those who are professionally dressed? and those who are less professionally dressed. I think it really depends on the position, but if you take sales, for instance, yep, you're probably going to be more confident. And the people you're dealing with are probably going to have take you a bit more seriously. If you're a technician, I don't expect you to be in a jacket, a nice shirt, and something else. But I expect you to look neat and uh, play the part. 
you know, our technicians do go out and talk to customers about their vehicles. What do you find? This is what I'd recommend. This is probably what you can wait on. Uh, but they need to look like a technician. If you're in the parts department, you need to know like you know the different parts of the car. So it, it really depends on what position you have. Is it possible to be too early for an interview? No. But don't present yourself until probably 10 minutes before the interview is supposed to start. Take a look around, the place of business, wait your car, do something else. How do you know when to dress up more than usual? Uh, ask somebody that knows a little bit more about the occasion you're going to. Again, reach out to people. Reach out to your friends, hey, what are you wearing to the dance tonight? But you do this already, I would assume. It's kind of similar. Um, and if you don't know, reach out to the person that invited you or, or is in charge. Yep. Hi. Okay. Um, thank you for having me today. Really appreciate it. Hopefully. Hopefully you got a little bit out of it. Again, I love cars. That's my passion. You have to combine it with a skill as well. But if you combine a passion with a profession, you're going to have a lot more fun. Again, thanks, Mr. Cordell, for speaking with us today. Uh, he had a great message. Uh, don't forget to get your blue packets on the way out. Uh, again, I got some down here in the front, uh, some for Mr. Marks in the back, and some on the other side. Uh, you guys will be going to your sixth block class. Sixth block.